Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing eight features that were added to Go 1.20 that I think are worth reviewing. Go 1.20 was released on February 1st, 2023, a few days ago. There are different ways to install it. You can use the typical go install command. You can use the pre-compiled binaries for Windows, Linux, and macOS. And if you happen to be using macOS and Homebrew, I will be linking the PR for the update of the formula. It's still in progress and not yet available. Let me show you the eight new features that I think are worth reviewing. Let's go. The first one is a new flag that was added to the build commands that allows you to compile a binary using a module uh, without changing to that directory first. For example, if I go and look at the readme, you will notice that I have two ways to build the, the binaries. An important bit will be that in order to, for this to work, you need to pass in a C uppercase and the example, or rather the folder name and the uh, module that you're trying to compile. And similarly, for example, to the module, I changed the name to represent example two. Now, if I go and open the files, you will notice that it's nothing, uh, it's nothing crazy. It just prints out, in this case, example one. And in the case of example two, it prints out example two. So if we go and copy, let me copy to save time, you will notice that now example one has example. And if I do something similar, I just change the name of the folder and the name of the binary. You will notice that example two is there as well. You can, as expected, call them and they will print out what you were expecting to print out. Let's look at the next feature. The next feature I want to show you is a new way to skip certain patterns when running Go Generate and when running Go Test. So if I open the readme, you will see what I'm going to be doing to demonstrate this for the generate part will be running this instruction. And if you see right here, you can clearly see that now we can skip a type for this specific use case. So let me copy this over. Run country, nothing happened because obviously we didn't change the generate uh, file that includes this country itself. So if I go ahead and I add a new type, you will expect that that the go generate to generate those new uh, go types, right? So if I do a go generate and I skip the country, you will notice that it's not there. This is okay because that's a file we just modified. Uh, however, if I do a go generate and I do again the same, you will notice that now we added the new country that was added in the code run down here. Regarding test, it's, it's a little bit similar. So if I go again back to the readme, and I'm going to be copying this instruction, and you can see that there is a new argument called skip, and that will indicate to skip the test that apply. So if I open the test, you will notice that a string returns a string. We have integer returns a, an integer, and that's pretty much it. If I open up the test, you could see that there are implementation for test string and implementation for test integer. So if I go ahead and do a code test to skip the integer, well, integer will not be executed. I can do the same and do the for the string if you can to demonstrate that as well. It's basically the same story. Let's jump into the third feature I want to show you. The next feature is code coverage for running applications. And to demonstrate that what I have here is a main example that takes a, and just does some silly things. Specifically, I want to call out this part because this will never run. And you will see that in the code coverage uh, execution in the result. Now, this is a bit convoluted and complicated, so I'm not going to be doing it. The important bit is that when you run the actual application, you need to pass in call cover dear to generate the code coverage that then you can use with the other available tools in the tool chain to generate a profile and i like using the profile for the html profile because it shows you exactly what i'm trying to demonstrate here in this case you see that uh, this section is not covered so that's cool it's, it's similar to the way code coverage works for test but again this is more for when the application is running really interesting let's jump into the next one the fourth new feature is one related to GoVet. And in GoVet, what is going to be happening is that when you're using a format that happens to be incorrect, which is typical, uh, GoVet will tell you that, hey, you're running, uh, it should be this way instead of that way. And if you happen to use Go, GoPlease uh, or Visual Studio, 
you will see visual code rather you will see that that also works for you so if i open up my main that happens to be having this issue you will see that now hey you shouldn't be doing this it's printing out right here right away but again if you do a go vet to the file itself it, it's going to be working the same way all right next feature let's go the fifth feature will be a new cool thing added to the errors package called wrapping errors so you can now wrap multiple errors using the standard library you don't need to import a third party in order to demonstrate this let me show you the code first and we can go and run it and see the output what we have here is two variables one error one and error two that happen to be used by join and also they happen to be used by the is functions to determine whether this error that was joined that happens to be only one error includes those types if we go and look at the way we typically wrap errors you know when you use the, the this um, uh, percentage w it actually works as well so you can still wrap errors using multiple percentage w and they will also work in a similar way using the is that was introduced a few versions ago so if we go around this you will see what i was telling you a while ago so it prints out one two which are the this first one prints out these two values then it prints oh is one because we have it here we have it right here and then below that line you will see that is also in print, printing out two which are the two next lines and similarly we do the fomp and eof and the end on file which are indicated in the code below with the is this is a really interesting new feature added to the errors package let's jump into the next feature this new feature is related to security and i'm glad that it was added to the standard library it's applicable to archive tar and archive zip so let me show you this is a bit convoluted but i want to show you exactly what happens so in this case to demonstrate this i'm going to be creating an un unsecure tar a file specifically is unsecure because it's referring to a file outside of the root of the the path that i'm that i'm accessing to this is a security concern so if i run this instruction it will do what i was just saying is creating a tar file that is under example under example and if i go and go into tar i build that one <laughs> got built if I do a go build, you will notice that now I have a tar file. If I run it, it will print out the content of those files. However, the key part here is that I need to pass in this variable that I have right here before running it to actually trigger this new security mechanism. And according to the, to the release notes, this is most likely how it's going to be in the near future. It's going to be enabled by default. You will see that right here is printing out. This is an insecure path. And therefore i'm not going to be reading it at all now the other one for the zip is a bit similar it uses a different a different environment variable if you notice this is zip and this is star but both are called the name insecure path so if we go ahead and and create an unsecure zip file if we create an insecure zip file and then we go to zip we build we run it it will again work as expected but if i do a I go zip insecure path and I did on the go zip you will see that now immediately the reader will not let you proceed this is a really cool feature hopefully it gets uh, enabled by default in future releases let's jump into the next feature next feature is related to the context package if you're not familiar with that package I highly encourage you to review a video that I put up a few months ago I will be linking the video in the description as well this is related uh, to a new api that was added to the context uh, type specifically now i want to show you how it was before with cancel and how it is now with cancel cost which in practice they work the same the biggest difference is that is that now when calling the cancel function so it's the return by the with cancel depending on of what method that you happen to be using you can actually specify the error that you want to indicate now if we run this i want to pay attention to a specific output because in this case the error that we receive when we only call with a uh, func with cancel and the other one that includes with the cause func it actually the values are different 
in the in the first one in the original one is using the context cancel error and in the second one that we just implemented is actually is using the error that we indicated explicitly this is a cool feature that may be useful in some cases let's jump into the last feature this last one is related to the time package it added a few new constants as well as a way to compare two different times specifically i want to show you the implementation what i'm doing here i'm just creating a typical uh, time using load location and date and so on and so forth the the thing that i was added is this uh, compare function as well as these new three constant that are according to the god server were some of the common use cases related to time if we go and run this the uh, results are what you were expecting now that was created now i added a few hours well co compared now to, to the future well the the one is in the future if i compare the past it will give me past and the now will give me the same value and this one were the three constants that i was telling you go time date and time ta date and only time and that's it those are eight of many new features that were added to go 1.20 i highly encourage you to read the release notes there is always something that could be useful for you thank you for watching i will talk to you next time take care stay safe